Hello and welcome to Great Plains Quinn Focus for Health. My name is Stephanie Maduna and I am a quality improvement advisor for Great Plains Quinn. This Focus for Health is hosted by the Great Plains Quality Innovation Network, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Quality Innovation Network, Quality Improvement Organization for North and South Dakota. And today we will be focusing on Just Culture. To make it interactive, please use your web cameras if you have one available. Today's webina webinar will be recorded and will be posted within one to two business days on our website at greatplainsquin.org under the Focus for Health link. That will also be shared with you. If you have any questions, please add them into chat and we will address them as we can. Um, there will be a resource handout that will include resources um, for today's session. And Carrie will have that available in the chat feature. So today we're going to talk about culture of safety and with this series, that's what we've talked about and the objectives of that. What we're going to discuss are strategies to achieve consistent safe operations in recognition of high risk organizational activities, establish a blame free environment where individuals report errors or near misses without fear of reprimand or punishment, encourage collaboration at all levels of the organization for solution to patient safety problems, and apply tools and resources to address safety concerns. So today's session will provide the importance of patient safety as it creates an environment in which health workers feel safe to report errors and concerns about things that could potentially cause an adverse reaction. So let's look at healthcare, past and present. When healthcare in the past, when we looked at it as far as looking at errors or incident reports, healthcare focused on placing blame on the healthcare worker when an error occurred. Healthcare providers were afraid then to report errors due to punishment. And we all know if we don't report errors, it's going to continue to happen. Today, we work with improving the reporting of errors to promote a blameless culture. Focus is on patient safety and just culture looks at the systems, the processes, and the human behavior to have a just culture environment. So today's topic is just culture. It is a system of shared accountability in which organizations are responsible for the systems they have designed and for responding to the behaviors of their employees in a fair and just manner. Employees are accountable for the quality of their choices and for reporting incidents and system vulnerabilities. So the just culture goal is to design safe systems that will reduce the opportunity for human error and capture errors before they reach the resident Safe systems should facilitate staff to make good decisions and to make it more difficult to make an error. However, keep in mind it is up to the individual to manage their behaviors and their choices. Whoops, let me go back one. Here we are going to go ahead and we're going to watch a video um, where a hospital is using just culture um, within their system and how it's working for them. It wasn't until the next morning when I had a nightmare that I realized that I had omitted a portion.
portion of the plan procedure. Obviously, uh, I felt horrible. Uh, in, in fact, the initial feeling was this can't be right. How could I possibly not done this? We took the patient back to the operating room. Patient ultimately did fine, but he did end up getting this second operation that he didn't need. I expected comments like, how could you be so stupid to do something like that? But instead, I got something totally different. I, when I was a younger surgeon, did something similar, so I understand what you're going through. Each of them was constructive and had a solution for helping me learn not to make this kind of error again. It's important for us to understand all the errors that occur because we're trying to figure out where we need to fix problems and what problems we need to fix immediately. We've surveyed staff to understand how they view the hospital's safety culture. And we learned more than half of our employees do not feel comfortable reporting errors. Many staff still feel that mistakes they may make are held against them. At Brigham and Women's, our goal is to create an environment where all staff feel comfortable speaking up and talking about errors so we can learn from events and improve the care we provide to our patients. It's just, I think, human nature to not want to admit when we make a mistake, but I think if it's done in the context of we all do it, we're all human, and it's going to help us to learn in order to do things better, and that it's not going to result in a punitive way in terms of talking about consequences if you do admit mistakes that may occur. It's really all about the patient improving the care and learning from the mistakes so that they don't occur again, so we minimize risk. Then I went back in the computer and I'm flipping through and I see him like, I gave her four of Dilaudid. My intention was to give her one. And I walked down to the MICU and I told the doctors, you know, my error. And they were very, you know, supportive and said, oh, if that's it, we can fix that. And acted like it was no big deal to me. It was like the end of the world. I'm like crying my eyes out. And I think about 45 minutes later to an hour, the patient was extubated and almost back to her baseline before it happened. But I still felt you know, terrible about the error. I woke up, I had like some six missed calls from my nurse manager, Janet, and I sat in a room and talked with her and she really just talked me through and just explained to me like, I'm not gonna punish you for this. This is something we wanna learn from, we wanna improve, we wanna prevent. When you make an error, the only way to improve upon it is to figure out why the error was made and keep it from happening again. Since my error occurred, we have initiated scanning on all medications that come out of the Omni cell up there, and we also don't have that high of a dosage of medication in there anymore. To create an environment where all staff feel comfortable talking about errors, we are adopting the principles of a collaborative, just culture. Using this safety culture tool, we understand that we are all human and can make mistakes. We are often making decisions in the face of competing priorities. Our systems can sometimes directly contribute to error. We need to really um, help folks feel comfortable that in this environment here at the Brigham, it, it is appropriate to, to raise your hand to say, I made a mistake, or this is an unsafe situation, or I'm concerned about X, Y, or Z, so that we can address it. The behaviors we're expecting of our leadership team and our staff is critical. Um, being able to apologize, being able to say that you were wrong in something. Because, you know, I make mistakes a million of them a day. And I think we need to be comfortable in our own skins that that is really okay because we're human as well. So we've committed to training. So with that, that was a great overview of the Just Culture um, environment in action within a facility. Um, we'll go ahead and go on and learn a little bit more about Just Culture. 
A man by the name of David Marks is seen as the father of just culture. He has worked to create accountable, safety supportive culture using his model of just culture and the just culture algorithm. He created this just culture algorithm that looks at systems, behavior choices, injury severity, and not blame free, but a just environment. There are core principles that came from the just culture. To err is human, human errors, system errors. To drift is human. You had well intended, but ended up cutting corners or it was a fast paced time or created risk. We need to keep in mind that risk is everywhere and we are all accountable for our actions. In 1997, David Marks launched a consulting practice and has been helping organizations promote as just culture in their workplace ever since. So with looking at just culture, here are some key questions that we would be looking at when we are reviewing an error or an incident report. So some of those questions that we would ask is, why did these accidents happen? What can we do to prevent them from happening again? And how do we judge the people involved? So with Just Culture, there are three duties in the Just Culture environment. These three duties need to be balanced against the organizational values and individual values for a Just Culture environment to work. So the first one is duty to produce an outcome. This is where an individual knows the desired outcome and should be able to produce it. So an example of that would be a surgeon who has performed 500 um, appendix removals. He would be able to go in and do that procedure and do it correctly to produce that outcome. The duty to follow a procedural rule is when an individual knows the proper procedure and it is possible to follow that rule. So with this, the procedure of ensued inserting a central venous catheter, there is a procedure in place exactly how to place that. If one would deviate from that, it could be not following a procedural rule. And the last one is duty to avoid causing unjustifiable risk or harm. This is a breach of this, a breach of this duty occurs when an individual intentionally harms the patient or acts recklessly. So thinking about an example of this is a nurse who makes a mistake, a medication error, and a resident begins to develop breathing issues. She does not tell anybody that she had a medication error, nor does she admit the medication error. So on her part, she is intentionally acting reckless in that instance. So one of the first slides we went over, it mentioned employees are accountable for the quality of their choices. Organizations must recognize that humans make mistakes. It is the behavior choices that must be managed. When looking at an error or incident, you need to determine what type of behavior the employee was doing at the time of the incident. So here are the three behaviors that we are going to review today. Oops, there we go. Um, the first one is human error. So with human error, it is an advertation, ad, bleh, sorry, advertent, action, a slip, a lapse, or a mistake. Somebody forgot something. Um, so with this, an example would be failure to implement a new order due to oversight. Um, you know, thought maybe the nurse beforehand had taken care of the order but was not signed off. So without implementing that new order, it could just have been an oversight. At-risk behavior are behavioral choices that increases risk where risk is not recognized or is believe, believed to be justified. So the employee will look at coaching, the employer will look at coaching the employee in this instance. 
And an example would be if the nurse knowingly deviates from a standard due to the lack of understanding risk to the resident and exceeding their scope of practice. This can happen when somebody does not follow that procedure correctly and skips or cuts corners on following the procedure or the um, policy the way it's written. And the last one is reckless behavior. This is a behavioral choice to consciously disregard a substantial and unjustifiable risk. So you're consciously disregarding. So with this, the employee will need to look at some sort of punishment for the employee. And that is something that can be worked on by the organization itself. An example of this would be if a nurse does not intervene to protect a resident because she's not assigned to that resident. So why should just culture be used in healthcare? There is a need to learn from accidents and incidents through safety investigation to take appropriate action to prevent that repetition of such events. With a just culture environment, seeing, invite in, in seeing events as an opportunity to improve our understanding of risk. So in a just culture environment, the culture of the organization needs to look at expectations with both the manager and the staff members. So looking at changing the managerial expectations, knowing my risk, knowing they have to investigate the source of the errors and what kind of behavior had taken place. They want to make sure that they have designed safe systems. They want to facilitate safe choices. So safe choices can be made by using the console, the coaching and the punishing from the just culture algorithm. Changing of staff expectations. Staff members should always look for risks around them. Report errors and hazards at all times. They help to design safe systems and they're making safe choices. When making safe choices, the employee is held accountable for following the procedure, making choices that align with organizational values, consciously doing the correct process and know they are avoiding risk. So just culture as a guide. Through Just Culture, the organization will be respectful in how they engage with those involved. They will be transparent in the evaluation process used. They will hold their systems and themselves and the staff members accountable, and they will learn from mistakes and close calls to improve the safety and performance of their facility. The just culture concept promotes a process where mistakes or errors do not result in automatic punishment, but rather a process to uncover the source of the error. And this was just kind of a cute little thing that I had found going opposite of everything that we've just discussed. So here's um, maybe a board member or an executive standing with his thumbs up and says to address this mistake, we need to utilize our thorough system of root cause analysis. I will begin, if I may, by pointing out that this is not my fault. And so that's just kind of cute. Um, we don't want to blame fault on anybody and we don't want somebody to say it's not my fault. Um, do I need to keep going? You mean as far as an office hours, Stephanie? Yeah. That's entirely up to you. Um, 
Did anybody oh. else join on? Sorry, I haven't. Yes. Okay. Yes, we have one one. Um, yeah, I think you can. I think you can just continue though and wrap it up, and we could do the resources unless you want to have a a, a no, dialogue. That sounds great. I will go ahead and go through the office hours. So with just with just discussing just culture environment. I just had a couple of things that I wanted to ask the group and you can put them into chat and Carrie, if you can help me, um, let me know what they're saying to the responses, I would appreciate it. So mm -hmm. I wanted to know if you have ever heard about Just Culture prior to today's presentation. So go ahead, if you have heard of Just Culture prior to today, go ahead and type in yes or no. We have a couple yeses, Stephanie oh. in the chat. Okay, perfect. Then the next question I have is, have you ever worked in a facility or have you promoted a Just Culture environment in your workplace? So once again, have you ever worked in a facility or have you promoted a just culture environment in your work? Once again, yes or no? We do have a couple of yes responses, Stephanie, in the chat. Okay, perfect, perfect. One of the things when I was working with a healthcare system, we were given the opportunity to go and be trained in just culture with David Marks. It was a 40 hour intense training, um, five days, eight hours a day, where we went through the Just Culture algorithm and the Just Culture environment. After we had done that for those 40 hours, we were to take it back to our facility and start looking at our incidents and our errors that were occurring and seeing if they followed along with the just culture um, algorithm, looking at our systems, looking at our behaviors, looking at our employees of what had taken place and how it had taken place. Um, it was quite an interesting course. Um, there was a 10 point questionnaire at the end which was very tough because it was putting all of the algorithms into order um, and then writing your discussion on how you would take care of a different scenario. So it was it was a great experience to have, but it is a hard it is a hard um, a hard program to go through. But if you're ever given the chance. David Marks does a wonderful job and he's still doing it today. Um, you can go ahead and look up David Marks and you'll find his company and you can go ahead and set up any sort of training that you would like to have. So with that being said, I want to just bring up, we will be having the November Focus for Health, which is going to be going over Team Steps. Team Steps is an evidence-based set of teamwork tools aimed to op optimize patient outcomes by improving community and teamwork skills. The objectives of this Focus for Health will be to examine the benefits and tools of the AHRQ Team Steps program. We will apply team steps tools and resources to improve the communication to provide a high quality safe care. The series dates will be November 1st, November 8th, November 15th and the 29th. And there is a link there where you can go ahead and get registered for it today. So then I just wanna thank you all for attending I'm going to be mindful of your time and we will be ending for today and hoping to see you back here next week for the start of a new series. Please complete the webinar evaluation so we can continue to work to make our time together valuable to you. 
We would really appreciate your feedback and attendees will be dropped off at an evaluation at the conclusion of this call. If it's easier for you, you can scan this QR code and click on the link within the chat to complete the form. As always, we really value your feedback on any of these weekly Focus for Health sessions and also any ideas on future topics you would like us to cover. So once again, here is that QR code to use with your camera on your smartphone or the link that is placed into chat. We would really love for you to open these and be ready to provide us with some feedback. So once again, thank you for joining and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Stephanie.